bright, cold day in April. And I know not all that may be coming, but be it what it will, Nowadays, I've got to know that we need never be ashamed of that We can experience nothing. Nothing is so painful to the human mind as a great and sudden change. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is a gothic novel that... Mary Shelley's thrilling 17th century gothic novel, gothic narrative, Mary Shelley's thrilling 17th century gothic fiction, Frankenstein, explores the creation of Frankenstein, while serving as a significant contribution to the genre of science fiction, explores through the character of Frankenstein's monster humanity's deepest and most stubbornly denied desires, through analysing Shelley's work through a psychoanalytical viewpoint. The application of theories, first posited by Sigmund Freud, in which Shelley's narrative and help us as readers to discover a greater significance within Shelley's work. This is best exemplified in the repetition of the phallic symbolism through the text. Wait, what? Frankenstein's creature towering over its creator, no, its wait, filthy what is mass this? clearly representative of an oversized phallus and the okay, convulsive agitation of the aroused creature Where are you getting this from? ejaculation? What the fuck? Let me see your notes on this, because you're... Well, your insights... The, there are no notes. There are no notes on this, Martha! It's, did you even read the book? Oh. Oh, oh, I see. I see how it is. You read the first line of my wiki page, now all of a sudden you're an expert on psychoanalysis. Is that it, huh? You can't even spell Oedipus. You bastard, it's Oedipus. O E D I. Along with this, it's clear Frankenstein's creation embodies the Jungian archetype. Of the shadow, existing as part of the unconscious mind and composed of repressed ideas and desires, the archetype lends itself to the evident homoeroticism experienced by Victor and Robert Walton. Excuse me. I know. It lends itself to what? Oh, you should have seen what she wrote about my theories. It can be argued that Victor's aggressive pursuit of scientific achievements is the construction of a primal repression. Wow. There we go. Wow, it's a pretty liberal use of the R word, don't you think? Repression this, repression that. Not everything is repression, Martha. Yeah, Martha. Martha, you bitch. You bitch, Martha. Ooh, he wears a white lab coat. Perhaps he's repressing his unconscious anemia or homoerotic tendencies. That's a rather bold postulation from someone who spells psyche with a K. The red underline means a spot incorrectly, dumbass. You know, it's kind of an honour to have my ideas, my theories and legacy immortalised in the half-baked misspellings of a 16-year-old imbecile. In the words of Friedrich Nietzsche, he who fights with monsters might become a monster if he takes care not to gaze for long into an abyss. Literally not even close. Not even close. It's a blatant misquote of one of the most influential philosophers of all time. It's not a misquote, it's illiterate garbage. I mean, who the fuck is Simon Freud? 
Oh, oh, Jesus, it's like she hasn't even touched it. I'm surprised she even owns a copy, since she obviously can't read. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The discernible parallels between her narrative and biblical prophecy, along with the romantic context which it was written, enlighten the reader to Shelley's stats on religion? Oh, you hear that, boys? I knew it. Oh, was that a comment about religion? I'll give you a dollar if she says it. I'll give you a hundred if she doesn't. You're wrong. In the words of Friedrich Nietzsche, God is ah, dead. Ah, that's gross! Men must live and create, my friend. Even if what they are creating is bullshit. She goes on a rant about nihilism somewhere in paragraph 5. Wait, nihilism? Paragraph 5? Wait, what? I know there's way too many paragraphs. No, no. You're not a nihilist. I am, Zul. No, well, me an actual nihilist. Always thought of you more as an existentialist. I'm not an existentialist. You know, like, um, Sartre. I'm not Sartre. I'm nothing like Sartre. Sartre wishes he was me. This is good. Not only does she claim the book proves the existence of Shelley's penis envy, she spelled penis wrong. Men must leave <laughs> and clean. I'm a psychiatrist. She wears a white lab coat. Yeah, I know. She's, 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 she's saying she's saying What is she doing? She's not writing anything. This is terrible. I can't... Whoa. What is she doing? I'm writing an essay. She had an essay. I'm gonna write something worth reading. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is the story of creation, the creation of a monster at the hands of a man. Although through the studying of the text, we as the readers come to know Frankenstein's monster isn't the monster at all, but instead the man. Creation is essential to the furthering of the human condition, but to create without perspective, to create without connection, to create without authenticity, is to create without care. When a text fails to engage with its author, they fail to engage with the audience, and thus the man, driven by his superficial ambition, becomes the monster.